Hey everybody, today I want to talk about a couple of things. It's two different subjects. They're kind of unrelated. They're both watch subjects, of course. Um, one is a, a watch that I bought, a long jeans, 18 karat gold long jeans online. I don't have it yet. It's on its way and I'm super excited about it. I I wanted to talk about it. I don't know if I overpaid for it, if I paid okay, or if, if, if it's underpaid. I don't really know. There's not a lot of information out there about this watch. This is the only one I've seen online. I'm not saying there, there aren't any others, but I've never seen this watch. It's really interesting. I did find a watch that looks kind of like it. It's got the same case design, but it's not 18 karat gold. I also bought it. It was only $100. Of course, it's not working, but there's parts that uh, it's a nice watch. So I think I can put it in a band. It's going to look nice. I thought for the price, I, I'll just take it down to my dad's shop and I'll fix it. But I did buy this long jeans and this is 18 karat gold. This is a really nice dress watch. I was I was looking for a dress watch for a while. I've said before in previous videos, I don't have a lot of occasions where I dress up or, or wear watches that are, you know, high end, elegant. And I, I was looking for a while for something to complete my, my watch collection. I'm, I'm trying to cut back on watches, which sounds funny that I'm saying I'm trying to cut back and I'm buying a watch, but I'm trying to cut back on a lot of the watches I don't really wear. Um, so I, I want to complete my collection and I was looking maybe for a Cartier, something like that. I was looking for a square watch, a, a, a more elegant watch. And I came upon this watch and I kept on seeing it online. It, it, it was there for a couple of weeks before I bought it. And then all of a sudden it was, it was offline. It, uh, it had ended and the post had ended. Then it came back online and, and I was thinking about it. I made an offer on it. And I just bought it. I think um, I think this is a watch. That I know this is the watch that I want. I haven't seen it. It's really, really hard to buy a watch that you've never seen, that you've never held. Just pictures. It's really hard. It does have the dimensions of the watch. So going off of that, I thought it, it, it's going to be a good watch. It's something that I, that I really, really want it. It's a long jeans. It's a quartz. I have no issue with quartz watches. Um, quartz watches are really good movements, too. It's, uh, of course, it's going to be a thinner watch, which is really something that you want. I don't have to worry about winding it. Some of the more vintage watches, they're, they're nice because you wind them, but you also run into the risk of overwinding them or, or you know, stripping gears. There's, there's different th stuff that can go on with older watches. So this is, I think it's a 90s watch. It's a quartz. It's really thin. I, I think I'm really going to enjoy this watch, and I wanted you guys to see it. I don't know if I ever paid for it. Honestly, I've never seen this watch before, so I don't know if I overpaid, underpaid, or paid just about right. I don't have any information. If you guys have any information on this watch, it'd be really interesting to, to know what you guys know about it. I don't know anything about it. Anyways, this is a this is a, a uh, 34 millimeter watch. And I have a watch here today I'm wearing my... And we're, the second topic is I'm going to talk about not the watch, which is it's an Omega Real Master, which is a beautiful watch. I am going to make a video on this watch. I want to talk a little bit about the watch band today. And I know it's a it's a rally strap and this is more of a field watch or a, it's an Aquaterra. Also, this watch is really interesting because it's a Seamaster. It's also an Aquaterra and also a Railmaster. So the only thing it's not, it's a, it's a race watch, but I have it in a, ra a racing rally strap. So I guess, I don't know. But I think this strap looks really nice on this watch. And I want to share a little bit about the strap and where to buy it because I always see really nice straps online now. I always wonder what, where, where do they get them? Where do they buy straps, you know, that nice? And it, people forget to share stuff like that because, well, once you have it, you don't think about it anymore. Anyways, I have this square watch that, that I've been wearing for a while, which, which is not a bad watch. It's a quartz watch also. And I took this watch as reference, even though the watch that I bought has a round dial, but it's kind of a square case. I guess it's both. It's a square watch and a round watch, so it's, it just it was just really interesting to me to see that watch. But the reason I have this watch on right now is for reference, and that's a 34 millimeter watch. So usually this is what a 34 millimeter watch looks like. This is an old uh, Benrus, and usually a 34 millimeter watch is a small watch. It's considered really small, but when you put it against a a square 34 millimeter, it doesn't look that. You know, it's, there's a big difference from a square watch to a round watch. So that's why I have this watch, just as a reference. So it's a 34 millimeters. This one is actually 35 this way. And it, this one's only 29 this way. So 34 would be about right here, roughly. 
So even though 34 millimeter watch seems like a small watch, this is not a small watch on my wrist. I have a seven inch wrist and this is definitely not a small watch on my wrist. So it's close to this, but without the square dial, which is gonna make it look smaller. So I think, I'm thinking, I don't have it, just just on the measurements going off of this watch and the, the caliper. I'm thinking a 34 millimeter watch is gonna, is gonna fit me okay. Like I said, usually when we think of a 34 millimeter watch, we're thinking of a watch like this watch, which, you know what? I, I don't have a problem wearing a 34 millimeter watch at all, but it is really a small watch. But it being a, a, a round watch, just makes it seem smaller. The other case should make it look bigger. That's an 18 karat gold watch, so it's really gonna, I think it's gonna be a really nice watch with, it's got a, a black leather band. It does have the original box. It was serviced, I can see the paperwork, it was serviced and it looks like it's got spare parts to it. The reason I bought the other watch the, for $100, which is almost the same, but of course it's only a stainless steel watch and it's not working, but it was only $100. But I think it's a, it's a good watch to have and. I, I think that if it looks nice on a strap, I'll put a strap on it if it's possible because that one, of course, comes with a bracelet, but I may be able to put a, a leather strap on it. And it may be a nice watch, too, for $100. It's not too bad. I know it's not working, but I can always fix it and, you know, find the stem and crown for it. And that's the first topic. That's that's an interesting watch. Tell me what you guys think. Would you guys buy something? It, it ended up being about $2,000, total cost of delivery and all. And it's still on its way, so it's... Kind of pricey, two thousand dollars for a watch. I don't really know. I don't know. Have any information about? Would you guys buy something like that online? I don't know. It's it's um, it's a watch that I I really liked aesthetically. It's eighteen karat gold. It's a watch that really spoke to me. So even if it's only worth a thousand dollars and I paid two thousand, let's you know worst case scenario, it's still a watch that I really really want. So you, they always say when you buy a watch, buy a watch you like and that you're gonna wear. It. Even though I haven't seen that watch, I just have a really strong feeling that by the measurements and I, I love Long Jeans. Long Jeans is a brand that I've always liked and admired. Uh, I love that square shape, which is really odd, a square square uh, case, kind of square case with a round dial. It's going to be interesting. At, at least aesthetically, it looks really interesting. So tell me what you guys think. Will you guys buy, you know, spend $2,000 on a watch that you've never seen? You know, it's a kind of a, or that there's no information about. I really don't have any information about now let's talk about the this dial. I mean, sorry, this band. This is a really, really nice band. This is a band that I got on, on Etsy. And I don't really buy on Etsy. I will leave a link to this band. It was like $55, so it's not really a cheap band. But, man, I, I, I'll tell you, I spent a lot of money on different bands that I didn't like. You know, I, I'll buy $15 bands, $20 bands. They come in, and they're... they're they, they seem to be like distressed leather. You look at the pictures online and it looks like a really nice band. And then it comes in and you could see the, the coloring, the painting that went into it. And and it's just really cheap. Now, this band, you'll see right away. I mean, there's just a lot of quality in this band. Of course, it's got the quick re release pins. Or really easy to, you know, take off. Uh, it's honestly, it's a band that I would recommend. It's not um, $55 is not cheap. You know, to pay $50 for a band is not cheap, but it's much cheaper than buying three or four bands that you may not use. This is definitely, anytime I, I post this this watch online or on a video, it just shows in a video, I, the question I get asked the most, the watch is beautiful for sure, and I get that comment a lot. It is a 39 millimeter watch, so it is a beautiful, beautiful watch. It still has the, the old ETA modified movement, but it's a, it's a really nice watch. But I think the band really helps it. Of course, I have the original steel band for it. But I don't really wear steel bands that much. There's only a few watches that, that I like on a steel band. And one is my uh, Rolex Datejust. And the other one is, is my uh, Black Bay 58. When I bought the Black Bay 58, I thought I was going to use it with different bands. And honestly, I, I just got used to the steel steel bracelet. And, and even though I'm not a, I don't really like steel bracelets, on that watch, I love it. On this watch, I really like it on a band, and I have different bands, but this seems to be the band that always stays on it. Like I said, I'll leave a link to this band. It's 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 a beautiful band. I would recommend it. I, I did when I got it. I put I, I, I have some beast wax that I bought at Boot Barn, and that's just to pre-treat uh, the leather or treat it. And I think it really helps it. It gives it a more, uh, gives it a little bit of a shiny look. And I have a feeling that it protects the stitching a little bit. 
I'm not sure about that. It's just something that I think about. I'm, I'm not really a, uh, a uh, leather expert, but I always put a little bit of beeswax on my on my uh, straps. I, I just buy that stuff at Boot Barn. It's not very expensive, and I have a whole bunch of it, and I just put it on. It hasn't affected my, my skin or anything like that. I mean, I don't know if some people are sensitive to that or not. I'm not, and I put it on my bands, and it looks pretty good. Like I said, I'm going to leave a, a link to this band. I'm not... You know that's Etsy, so I don't. I'm, I'm not affiliated. I don't have anything to do with them, but I think it's a. I want to share it with you guys. I think it's a. It's a band that's worth buying. I get a lot of questions about this band, so I'll share it with you guys. Share the link at least. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.